the Hubble Space Telescope has discovered methane gas on a planet 63 light years away. Now, methane gas is associated with life, and if this were a less mature show, we might take this opportunity to make a joke about alien cow flatulence, but we won't do that. Methane is an organic compound, which means if you combine it with water in just the right way, it can form amino acids, which are the building blocks of life. But that doesn't mean that the planet known as HD 189733b can actually support life. It's described as hot Jupiter, which means it's hot and Jupiter-like. So the finding is mostly important for a proof of concept that scientists actually can find organic compounds on other planets. It used to be that just finding planets was a tall order. Um, so we're making baby steps, but it's progress. You may know him as the guy who wrote 2001. Or you may know him as the guy who spawned a million acid trips. Yeah, maybe that was all Kubrick. But what you may not know about Arthur C. Clarke is that he really put the science in science fiction. For instance, he popularized the idea of a geosynchronous communication satellite in 1945. Mm, kind of a big deal. He also foresaw space labs, cyborgs, and bioengineering. When he died on March 19th, uh, fusion power was about 20 years late, according to his predictions. But maybe that's just our fault, not his. Sorry to let you down, Arthur. We are working on it. Now, I know this isn't the, the technical term that you guys at NASA would, uh, would appreciate, but the Japanese module that's coming up, I've essentially heard it described as a space closet. Tell me about that. Ouch. Japan's contribution to the International Space Station isn't getting much love. I mean, couldn't they come up with something cooler, like maybe, I don't know, a giant anthropomorphic robot? Oh, <laughs> oh wait. Canada already did that. Yeah, that's right, we rule. This is Dexter, an 11 foot tall, $200 million robot that will perform space maintenance tasks so that astronauts don't have to take as many dangerous spacewalks. It can lift 1,300 pounds, and with its gripper hands can manipulate hardware with millimeter accuracy, as light as a feather, as gentle as a bunny. They assembled it last week and it's gonna stay up there a while, you know, doing its thing, saving lives, being awesome, being Canadian. I mean, look, we dominate every other area of cool, fun stuff. We're just, we're just a really cool country, and face it, you love us. We've all looked up at the night sky and wondered what's out there. But maybe why is a better question. After all, the Big Bang created matter and antimatter. And we all know what happens when those two get together. Antimatter. What, what, what are you Don't doing? Don't touch me. No. Stay Bad away, idea. I'll kill you. <laughs> Right. They annihilate each other. But clearly that didn't happen. I mean, look, there's matter, 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 matter everywhere. Some physicists in Japan wanted to figure out why, so they smashed electrons and their antimatter counterparts together to create an unstable particle called a B meson. And they found that apparently the B mesons decay in a way that definitely favors matter over antimatter. So it's a start, but more info is definitely needed, and because this is physics, that means they're going to rely on the same deus ex machina that everyone else is pinning their hopes on these days. Dark matter, string theory, the god particle. This thing's got a pretty full plate already. I really hope it works.